Hi, thanks for joining us. My name is Becky Madden with the University of Vermont Extension, and I'm pleased to introduce you today to our nutrient management web platform. We've worked with Mike Stenta of PharmOS to design this. It's meant to help vegetable farmers with record keeping for their soil amendment applications, their soil fertility management, their planning, and it also provides access to a whole host of other features through PharmOS, including mapping, um, laying out your beds, record keeping, harvest, all sorts of exciting features that Mike is gonna um, touch on in his introduction today. I'd like to mention that we have some um, funding to provide free access to this platform for three years to all members of the Vermont Vegetable and Berry Growers Association. We've, um, we're grateful for funding through the Vermont Vegetable and Berry Growers Association UVM Extension, Northeast Risk Management, and the USDA and Specialty Crop Block Grant Program, also through the Vermont Agency of Agriculture. So I'm gonna hand this over to Mike. I did wanna mention that although we've designed this to help farmers with compliance um, for the required agricultural practices, it does not, this is just simply a tool and a mechanism to support your work on nutrient management. So please don't hesitate to contact me if you have questions about any of this. And we look forward to hearing from folks how this works out and any feedback you have, please pass along. Thanks, Mike. Absolutely, yeah. So PharmOS is a uh, piece of software that I started a few years ago. It's a, an open source project, which means the code is available for free to download. Anyone can set this up and run, them, run it themselves. Um, I'm partnering with UVM and the VVBGA to provide hosting to all v VVBGA members. So each farm can have their own farm OS and map out their areas and add their records and manage it all through their own system. Um, so farm OS started because we really needed a, uh, a way to manage records such that the, the farmers themselves really controlled their data and owned it. Um, so it, it started as kind of a volunteer project and I've been working on it for a couple of years now and have been starting working with some larger organizations who see the, see the potential and want to drive it forward, um, including the VVBGA. Great, thanks Mike. And I should also mention that um, this is also largely funded by University of Vermont Extension. So if you're just starting out as a VVBGA member, you can register your farm to set up a new farm OS site at this URL, farmos.vvbga.org. Once you get there, you'll see some information um, about the project in general, as well as uh, some background information. To register, you come up here to the top right and click this register link. This will ask for things like your farm name, um, which will automatically generate a URL. So if you say blueberry farm, then this will tell you what the address of your farm OS will be. So in this case, it will be HTTPS, blueberryfarm.vvbga.org. So that can be customized to what, what you want. Then you type in your farm address, and what this will do is create an initial point within your farm uh, under your area, so you can get start mapping if you want. And then your name and your email address. And this email address is where the link and login information will be sent once your farm OS is ready. So that's the registration process. You'll get an email when that's set up and ready to go. And once you log in, you'll see, uh, you'll see a system that looks some, somewhat like this. So this is uh, Becky's test farm that she created earlier. So we're gonna use this to kind of walk through some of the features here. Um, and before I get started, I'll just point out too that if you're looking for more general, general information about PharmOS, there's a great user guide on PharmOS.org uh, right up here on the top. And it has information um, in the introduction about how to log in, uh, what your dashboard looks like, as well as other things about general navigation. Um, and then it gets into some, some other details, which we'll, we'll, cover in, we'll cover some of them during this video. But things like mapping your farm, logging events, managing assets like plantings, animals, equipment, um, and so forth. For the, for the VBBGA members specifically, what we focused on is the nutrient management requirements. So for that, we created this nutrient management dashboard. 
And this dashboard shows the three main areas that we're hoping uh, farmers will use to keep track of their records. So the three main things we're looking at are soil tests, nutrient management plans, and amendment records. So with soil tests, in PharmOS, you can manage all of your soil tests and, and have a record for each one that you've taken. So th these are some that uh, Becky put in earlier. So you can see each soil test is a log in the system and it has uh, a date associated with it. It has the lab that processed the, the test. Um, it can be linked to certain areas in your farm, which we'll show later. And it can have notes, uh, as well as the the results of the test can be uploaded to. So if I click through to one of these, we can see we've got um, a spreadsheet file attached to this one. And in this case, this soil test, this log actually contains all of Becky's 2017 soil tests. So this is an important thing to note is that when you're dealing with soil test records in PharmOS, if you're looking at this list of soil tests, this, these can either be individual tests like this one here, or they can be if, for example, your lab, uh, if, you're, if you're doing a lot of soil tests and you want to be able to get all of those in, you have a choice of either putting them each in individually so that you have separate lines for each one, or you can just put them all in one line and you can say something like all 2017 soil tests. So that just makes the data entry a little bit easier. It's not as granular that way because you can't search by date or by field. Uh, but it at least gets it into the system so that you can find it again easily. So there's a bit of a drawback there, but if you just want to get it in there, th that's a good way to do it. And Mike, I just want to point out too that, um, like what I've uploaded here, that second one down, October 15th, that is a PDF that came from the, the lab directly. It's what they emailed me. But if you have hard copies or paper copies of your soil tests at home, you can simply take a picture or scan them and send you know, upload that document as well. It doesn't have to be the actual document from the lab, or if you've created your own spreadsheet rather than it coming from the lab, that also can go up here. So it's kind of any form of document can be um, thrown up here. What we're trying to encourage is having a storehouse, a storage place for your soil test records. So whatever works for the farm is the best use of this. I think that's a great way of describing it too, is that PharmOS is a storehouse. It's a database, so you can use it to store and organize all of your records. And it leaves, it leaves some of that discretion over how you store it and how you organize it up to you. There's some recommended ways to make it easier to find things, but for the most part, it's just structured around this idea of logs. So you have logs that, that are of different events, such as activities, inputs, uh, harvests, and soil tests, um, and then, each one of those has a date, so you can then have this timeline of events that took place and makes it easier to find those things in the future. And Mike, are you able to um, walk us through the, um, when you add a soil test, what we wanna do for the date input there? Sure, yeah, let's take a look at adding a soil test right now. So to add a soil test, there's two ways you can do it. You can, um, the easiest way is to go through the nutrient management dashboard. So I'm just gonna jump back to that. So again, this is what you'll probably want to start with whenever you're coming into PharmOS for your nutrient management record keeping. You'll click on the nutrient management tab here to bring you to this dashboard. And then you'll click on some of these quick links that are under one of these headings here. So with the soil tests in, in particular, you can click this add a soil test record. And this will bring you to the form for adding a new soil test. So just to Go over this uh, help text right here. It says, use this form to enter information about soil tests you have performed. Use the log date field to record when the soil sample was taken. Test results can be up uploaded to the files field as a PDF or other document. Each sample or test can be entered as a separate log for easier searching or filtering later. Or if you have a document from your lab that contains results of multiple tests, you can upload that to a single log for general storage. Give it a relative date based on when the samples were taken so that you can find it by month or year. So what that's referring to is when we're adding a, a new soil test, we might say this was the 20, uh, 2017 or 2018 spring tests. So in this case, I'm gonna pretend that this is 
one log of multiple tests. So I might give this a date of March 15th, 2018. And the, the granularity here is, is um, very optional. So you don't have to enter an hour, minute, and second. So for this, I'm actually just gonna set these to zeros so that I know that this is kind of an estimate. And again, you don't have to do this. It's just a, it can be helpful. But these, this date here will be used for sorting the logs in lists in the future. So you wanna make sure that it's around the same time that these were taken so that you can find them in, again in the future because you know in your head that you took these soil tests in the spring. Uh, so you wanna make sure it's somewhere around them. Yeah, I think having the, the season and the year accurate is really about as you know accurate as we, like the ones I just uploaded, I just, I knew they were in the fall, so I said October and I knew the year, but I left the defaults for the date and the time, um, so. Great, yeah, and moving forward, if, if this is something that you find useful, you can load this on your phone simply by going to your URL up here on your phone. So if you're taking a new sample out in the field, you can go, you can go in and add a soil test while you're taking it so that the, the hour, minute, and second actually get filled in automatically for when you took that sample, which, you know, again, you might not need that type of granularity, but it's just to say that it's, it is that easy to, to get started. So often what I'll do is when I'm taking a soil test, I'll go out, uh, dig my samples, put them in a bag, and then open it on my phone and add a new soil test that I can then upload the results to later once I get them back from the lab. So then I know exactly when I sampled um, in there. So continuing through this, we would add a, la a laboratory here. So we could say UBM, we could say Cornell, we could say whatever lab you're using. And some notes if you wanna take some notes. These, most of the fields on this are optional, so you don't have to fill in any of this if you don't want to. So I'm gonna skip the rest. I will jump down to this location field though, and I'm gonna say that this is, I'm gonna link this soil test to a field. So I'm gonna say this was um, taken from my strawberry field here. And what you can also do is put in the precise sample points that you sampled from. Again, this is optional, but it is kind of neat to be able to go in and say, okay, these are the points where I, dug samples from on my field. And so to do that, you would click this draw a point button on the bottom left, and then you just click on the points where you, where you took the sample from. You'll notice the, the uh, geo code gets filled in automatically below the map, so that's what's gonna be saved. And those are just GPS coordinates, but you don't need to worry about that if you use the drawing tool. And then if you scroll down, there's this uh, nice feature here that if you have points mapped on the map, you can click this look up soil names button and this will actually send those points to the NRCS server and ask what types of soil you have in those points. So in this case we can see we have virgenous clay two to six percent slopes and then it shows the codes for that soil type as well. Um, oh one other thing I forgot to show is in the maps you can turn on the NRCS soil survey layer as well which will pull in the soil information for your for your farm. So you can see most of this farm is the same soil type, but if we zoom out a little bit, we can start to see the other types that are around in the surrounding area. So just to demonstrate, I'm gonna throw another point over here in this other soil type, and then I'm gonna come down and click the look up soil names again. And now we see we have another one. It's the same type of soil, but it's six to 12% slope instead of the two to 6% slope. So we can see most of the soil around here is uh, the same type. Great. Then down at the, on the left here, I'm gonna click the files tab. And this is where you would go to upload a, uh, a PDF or other document for this, um, for this soil test. So once you're done, you would come down and click the save log and then it would show up under your list of soil tests here. And you can get to this page either by going to logs and soil tests on the top, or by going to your dashboard and view all soil test records here. Mike, I just wanna, um, you did that quickly, but navigating back to the dashboard, you would go up and either click on farm OS or on the farm name, 
which in yep. this case is Bex Farm. And then you click on that middle tab. That's right, yeah. So this brings you to the general PharmOS dashboard. And then to get to the nutrient management dashboard, you click this tab here. Great. Okay, so then the next thing, once you have your soil tests in place, you'll want to upload your nutrient management plan. And uh, Becky, maybe you can talk for a second just about what the requirements are around um, that process. Yeah, and um, just to be clear, that the, calling this a nutrient management plan is a bit of a misnomer for um, what we currently have on this website. A nutrient management plan with capital NMP is a very like, um, all-encompassing plan, including like erosion, um, uh, landscape features, water features. What we're really focusing on here are soil amendment plans. So using those soil tests to guide amendment applications and amendment plans. So ultimately this will um, blossom out into more of a nutrient management plan module. But for now, what we're just trying to get, um, make easier for folks is using soil tests to plan your soil amendments, keep the plans on this um, website in whatever format, once again, whatever works for the farmer is great. Um, and then same thing with the records. So the plans and the records kind of will mirror each other here. But for starters here, um, Mike's helped us um, use an existing template that you can simply download and you can write on, print out and write on in the field. Or if you have your own, most farmers probably have their own planning um, system, whether it's in a notebook and written by hand or whether it's electronic, whatever format you're using is gonna be fine for this as long as it has a few key features. Um, and you can, once again, either scan that or upload it back um, electronically through this module. So just to be clear, you don't have to use this template, but, um, I would at least glance at it and make sure that you have the key features involved, which are um, documenting your um, anticipated date of application, your um, recommended amounts of each nutrient, and then how much of each amendment you plan to apply. So, um, yeah, Mike, if you want to walk us through downloading the worksheet. Sure, yeah. So we've got a link here to download the planning worksheet. So I'll just download this to my desktop and open it up. And this can be Excel, Mike's using LibreOffice. Um, uh, so whatever spreadsheet program you have, this will work in. Yep. And then, and, this, sorry, oh, I was gonna say this template has several tabs on the bottom. So there's a, some calculation templates, there's a worksheet, there's a soil test schedule. This can be used offline, like you can just take this and run with it and you don't have to upload all of it again, but um, it's meant to be a useful tool for farmers. Um, but this sheet we're looking at here, it are the, the, the major things we're gonna have to think about for making a plan. So your field, the acres, the recommendations that come off of your soil test, and then what you're planning to put on it, if anything, and what rate. And Great, yeah, and this, um and I think it's good to emphasize too that this is just your plan. Your actual uh, records will go under these amendment records down here. So we'll cover that in a moment. Um, but we, you do, you are required to have to have both types of records. Is that correct, Becky? Yes. Yep. Yep. That's why we we split them apart here. So you, you're supposed to have a plan. Your records don't have to mirror the plan, but you are supposed to be planning and basing your plans on soil tests. Right, great. And so in the, Becky mentioned this earlier, but in the, in the future, in the next phase of development of this, we're hoping to incorporate a lot of that planning worksheet logic directly into this nutrient management module. So in the future, you may not have to download this worksheet. You can, we can, uh, we're talking about building a wizard that you walk through within here that lets you develop a plan directly in PharmOS. But for now, this is the, this is the uh, recommended approach. And it also, like, like you said, Becky, it allows farmers who already have a methodology for developing their plans to still use this. They just upload it, upload whatever they have rather than this worksheet. Yeah, I think that's a key point in some, you know, allowing people to keep the systems that they are already using. But this just, yeah. once again, behaving as a storehouse for that. 
So regardless of whether you're using this worksheet or your own uh, documents, what you will want to do is create, you'll, up, you'll upload them to the same place. You'll be doing that by creating a new nutrient management plan here. So I'm gonna click that link. And what this is, is this just, this just allows you to describe in PharmOS what your plan is gonna be. And this is where you'll upload your worksheet or any other documents to. So I'm just gonna say, this is my 2018 NMP. And I'll give it a, actually I'll say this is my 2019 for now. And I'll give it a date range of um, March 1st, 2019 to November 1st, 2019. And this is just for your own organization's sake um, and, and sorting later. I'll show you where this ends up in a moment. You can also optionally say what areas in your farm are going to be part of this plan. I'll skip this for now, it's optional. Again, it's mainly just for your organizational purposes if you need it in the future. But most importantly, the files field is where you will actually upload the file that we, that we downloaded a moment ago. So um, I don't know if I'll be able to find that because I've pretty disorganized here. So I'm just gonna grab this file and upload it. And then I'll save this. So now I'm looking at a 2019 nutrient management plan record. And to, to get back to this, I'll show you how you can get back to this by two different paths. One is up here on your main menu, there's a link called plans. And under that you'll find nutrient management plans. So this will list all the nutrient management plans you've added to the system. So you can see Becky's added a couple of other ones here. There's one for 2018. Here's the one that I just created in 2019. So think about this as a way of organizing your, your documents around each plan. And you can sort them by, you can organize them by date. Uh, there's also a general season uh, category in PharmOS that you can use. I won't go into detail on that right now, but if you have, that might be useful if you have, if you're managing multiple plans per season or per year, um, things like that. You can also archive these so that they don't show up in this list anymore, but they're still there in the future if you need to. So the other place you can find a list of all your nutrient management plans is from the nutrient management dashboard via this link here, view all nutrient management plans. And that'll take you back to the same page I just showed, which is under this uh, plans drop down up, up above. Great. So again, the goal is mainly just to give you a place to organize your documents. Um, and one of the benefits of having them in PharmOS like this is that you can then give other people access to it over the internet. So for example, you could create a login for Becky to come and review your plan for you. Uh, that's one thing we didn't talk about with PharmOS, but you, you can create multiple user logins by going to this people tab up here. So you can see there's a login for Becky and a login for me on this site. Um, and there's more information on how to do that in the PharmOS documentation. So I won't go into too much detail and there. Just to be clear, that's controlled by the user. So, um, you know, one of the functions we see of this is if we have a housing place for all of your nutrient records that if you're VOF certified, this is what you could use to show your certifier your records rather than, um, you know, multiple multiple uh, versions of the same records. So this is our, our long-term hope and goal is to help farmers um, not have to duplicate efforts with record keeping. So let's uh, talk about the last piece here, which is recording your actual amendment records. So this is different from the plan that you developed originally. This is what you've actually done throughout the season. And the way we have this set up is we created a quick form so that you can load this up on your phone whenever you put an input into your field or any kind of amendment. You can walk through this form, add all the information, and it will create a log in the system for you. So to show you what that'll end up looking like, I'm gonna click this link here, view all input logs, because I think it helps to see what the end result will be. These are some input logs that uh, Becky's already added. So you can see they're just like the soil test logs. They have a date, they have a name, but in this case, they also have a quantity uh, of what was added, as well as notes, and they're linked to a certain area. So if I click into one of those, we get even more detail. 
we can see that 50 pounds of uh, this material were added to the field, but also it has information about what the ratio of N, P, and K was, uh, the application method, broadcast, um, soil amendment as the purpose, source and manufacturer, and all of these fields, I'll show you now what it looks like typing those in. We've tried to make this uh, input form as simple as possible while still covering everything we needed. So again, I mentioned before that uh, FarmOS does work on a small device too, so you can load this up on your phone while you're out in the field and fill out this form just, just like you would on the computer. So uh, I'll walk through it on a larger screen, but that's just to show that it works on small screens as well. So when you're recording a soil amendment, first you'll add a date to say when it went in, and this will default to the current date and time. So if you're out in the field, you don't have to even worry about this. Then you'll say what area you are amending. So I can start to type in a name and it will drop down at the ones that are available already. So I'll select strawberry field right now. If an area isn't already in FarmOS, it's okay, you can just type in a new one here and it will create that for you. So I'm actually gonna demonstrate that. I'll say blueberry field instead. Then down below, uh, you, would, you would put some information about how big the area is. And you can do this in two ways. You can either say what the total size is in acres or square feet, or if you're doing a single bed, you can say what the length of the bed is and the width of the bed. And it'll, it'll calculate what the total area is for you after that. Um, for so like actually, garden, sorry, that's great for a garden area too. If you, you know, if you have just like an awkward sized garden, you could do the square footage that way. Yeah, exactly, yep. Uh, so let me just show one other thing before I go on. If we have a field that's already been mapped, like field B, this will actually pull in the area size automatically for you. So that's just a, a, an incentive to map out your farm first. Again, you don't have to do that, but it will save you some time during the, this amendment information. So I'm gonna go with that for now. I'm gonna say we're, we're amending field B. And so field B is 1.13 acres. So then you would come down to the amendment information and you would type in what the name of the amendment is. So for this, I'll say compost. But this could also be uh, a fertilizer that you've purchased. So you would just put in the name of that right here. And then if you know the nutrient analysis, enter that in here. So if, if you know that your, uh, the fertilizer you bought is 555, for example, you can put that in here. Which you should know and do for the RAPs. Mm -hmm. So then underneath that, you can also put in the source and manufacturer. So I'll say Vermont compost in this case. And if you do add a source and manufacturer, you also get these additional fields here that optionally let you put in the lot number and the date of purchase. And these fields are necessary for some produce safety uh, requirements too. So it's a good idea to put those in if you have them. The more information, the better, but it's up to you. So below that is the application information. So this is method of application, which can be broadcast, side dress, foliar, or other. And if you choose other, then just add some notes down below about what that was. And whether or not you're applying a weight or a volume. So in this case, I'll say that I applied one ton of compost. And below that, you'll also enter what the percentage of the area was that was amended. So you could just leave this set to 100% if you added it to the whole area. Or if you only did half the area, you can set it to 50 or something like that. And then down below, you'll notice that it, it auto calculates for you what your rate of application is. So 0.88 tons per acre. And then the last section is the notes. So you should type in some information about what your current field condition is when you made the application, as well as any crops that are currently in the field or will be in the field during or after this amendment. And lastly, any other notes you wanna add. So once you put all that in, you can click this create input log. 
and that'll create a log for you. So this says log created, soil amendment, one tons compost into field B. And I can click over to that. That'll show the information that I pointed out earlier. It'll also automatically draw on the map the area that you selected. So you can see this is where I put that. And it'll then show up in your, in your full list of inputs over here. Awesome. Can you show the filter function quickly too for this? Yeah, that's a great idea. So um, most lists in PharmOS can be filtered and sorted in different ways. So this allows you to, if you have a lot of information, to drill down to certain things. So to do that, you open up this filter or sort box. And there's a bunch of different uh, filters in here that you can use. And we're constantly adding new ones too. So if, you, if there's a filter missing that you think would be really useful, reach out to one of us and we, can, we might be able to add it and include it in the next version of FormOS. But for the sake of this one, I'll just demonstrate that I can simply uh, filter by log name. So if I click apply there, then it'll just filter down to that one that I just did a moment ago compost and all so I can reset that or I can filter by date too so let's say I just want to see the amendments that I put in in May so let's select May first as a start date oops and May 31st as an end date Now it shows only the two that happened in May, so May 5th and May 8th. So this can be useful if you're trying to look at everything that's happened in a given year or a given month. Um, to do a year, you would just set this to January 1st and December 31st. And that'll show, that'll show everything in this case because we, we've only put in things for 2018. So again, to get to this list, you can either go to logs and inputs up here because those are input logs, or you can go to the nutrient management dashboard and we've got a quick link to that right here. View all input logs. That's awesome. So I think that covers the, the main features of the nutrient management dashboard. Was there anything else we should touch upon? Uh, I think that's awesome, Mike. Thank you so much. Um, one point that I just wanted to be clear about for folks is that um, this specific nutrient management mod module was designed for free use for the members of the Vermont Vegetable and Berry Growers, but it provides access to all of the cool Farm OS features. So I want to emphasize that Mike has some great um, help documentation up and, and people should feel free to noodle around if you've got a long cold winter ahead and you want to really make the most of this website. Um, there's a lot of depth to it. So um, we're really grateful to have access to it all. Yeah, I'm excited too. And what, one of the nice things about FarmOS is that it's modular. So this nutrient management dashboard is just an additional module that we built to put on top of the rest of FarmOS. But the other modules that FarmOS includes uh, are things for managing your plantings, your animals, your equipment, uh, mapping your areas, um, and then there's additional ones that we're working on too for rotational grazing uh, and, and other more specialized features. And you have so, a produce safety one too in the pipeline, right? That's right, yeah. Also worked on that through UVM. So, awesome. Okay, so I'm just gonna give a quick demonstration of how to use the FarmOS mapping features to map your farm. And again, this is an optional step for the uh, members of the Vermont Ver Vegetable and Berry Growers Association. Uh, but it is a useful thing to do, and it is kind of fun also, I think. So again, we earlier we went over adding your soil tests and adding your amendment records. And one of the things that I mentioned is while you're adding amendment records, you can type in your area name here that you're amending, and it will drop down a list of areas that you've already created or it will let you create new ones. So I could say blueberry field. And that will actually create a new area in FarmOS. It won't map it for you, but it will be there uh, when you're ready. So let's look back at the input logs that Becky created earlier, just to demonstrate that. So we can see that earlier, Becky put in these area names when she was creating her amendment logs. 
And each one of these now is a record in FormOS. So I can click through into, for example, Strawberry Field. I can click on that. And this will show me all the records that are attached or, or associated with this area. So if I scroll down, I can see here's that input log. If I go up here to the top menu, you'll see this link for areas. This is the main page for managing your areas in FormOS. So over here on the right, we can see all of the ones that were created via the input logs. You can also create them manually here by going to add area. So I'll just demonstrate that really quick. So I'm gonna say this is called field C. So you just type in a name there and you give it a type. So the types are building, field, landmark, water, property, greenhouse, bed, and paddock. So for this one, I'm just gonna call it field. Uh, it doesn't really matter what type you put. It, what that will determine right now is what color it shows up as on the map. Um, and some other more specialized modules will integrate with these field types. For example, the grazing module will load in the paddock areas that you have. Uh, but for now, I'll just demonstrate the simple field. So then down here, you have a map that allows you to draw, uh, draw the field in. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and you can use your... For zooming, you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse or these buttons over here on the, on the left for zooming in and zooming out. And to draw, you will use these buttons down here on the bottom. So I'll go through each one of these really quick just to demonstrate what they do and how they work. So from left to right, we have draw a point, draw a line, draw a circle, draw a polygon, so those are the four main drawing tools. And then on the right, we've got some tools for modifying shapes. So we've got edit features, move features, and clear features. So the clear one is useful because this will just wipe out anything that you've drawn. So for example, if I wanna draw a point, I'll click on point, I'll click somewhere on the map. And then if I wanna remove that, I just hit this X over here and that'll remove that. Now note, this will remove all features. So if I drew a bunch of points and hit the X, they would all be removed. So that's how you draw a point. A line is similar. You just start with one point and then click again to add another one. And you can keep going from there. So if you were to draw a fence, for example, you might want multiple points. When you're done, you just double click and that will complete the, the line for you. Mike, just quickly, can a line measure distance for you? Uh, it can't currently. Uh, we don't have that feature, but that is a feature that is on the roadmap. And so if you do have lines in here, when we add that, you'll be able to see what their distance is. But right now, the, the measurement only happens on polygons, so measuring the area of a shape. Great. Uh, so if you if you need to, there's also a circle drawing feature where you basically just click in the center of the circle and then click on the outside. So you're basically just defining the radius of the circle there. But the one you'll probably use the most is this draw a polygon. So a polygon is very similar to a line, except that it's closed. So the shape that is formed will always connect back onto itself. So you can click around to different sides and different corners, and then when you're done, you double click, and you'll see it creates a nice closed shape there for you. So this is what you'll use for drawing out your, your areas, your fields, um, properties, buildings. Most of those things will be, will be polygons. Uh, now there's some other tools here too that I mentioned, which in general you may, you may never use, but they're here if you need them. So the edit features, but and allows you to modify a shape that you've already created. So to do that, you click on that button and then you click on the shape itself. So you want to click on the edge of a polygon. And then you'll see that we've got this little cursor here that traces around. This allows me to click and drag to change the shape at the vertices. If you click in the middle, you can add a vertice to, to change it that way. So that's one way to do it. The other, if you don't want to mess around with that, you could just redraw your polygon. 
to be the way you want it. Uh, similarly, there is a move polygon feature. So to do that, you click on the move features. Then you click on the, the actual polygon and you can move it around like that. Simple enough. Um, so I'm going to clear that. Uh, two other things I want to show on here, maybe three. Over here on the right, it'll show uh, a list of layers that are being displayed here. So there's a couple of options here. By default, the base layer is going to be a Google hybrid, which means it's, it's the satellite imagery from Google along with um, road names and that kind of thing. That's what, it, that's what the hybrid is. We also have OpenStreetMap as, as an option. So that'll change it so that it's not a satellite, but it's more of just the, the street map, um, which for some cases might be helpful. Uh, so it's there as an option. We also, which I demonstrated earlier in the, in, uh, the nutrient management webinar, have uh, the NRCS soil survey layer. So if you turn this on, this will load in the overlay of uh, soil types on the map. So you can see what soil types you have. And you can look these codes up on the NRCS website or using the soil test feature in PharmOS, which I demonstrated earlier. Um, the other layers that are available are the uh, the farm. This farm areas layer, this will actually toggle on and off these gray boxes showing areas that you've already mapped on the farm. So that can be useful if you're, if you're zoomed in really far and you're trying to see where your previous area was that you drew so that you can line up with it or something like that. And then this top one, this will actually toggle on what you're currently drawing. So let me just put in a shape right now to demonstrate that. I'll put in another polygon. And I could toggle that on and off if I wanted to. So you may never need to use these, but they're there if you, if you want. Uh, the other two features we have are up here. We have this geolocate button. If you click this, this will actually attempt to look up your current location based on your IP address of your computer, and it will zoom to that uh, point on the map. So I'll try that right now. And in this one, in this case, it asks for permission to do that. So I can say allow, and then boom, there's my house. <laughs> That's where I am currently. So that's useful if you're if you are trying to map somewhere from somewhere that is not already mapped on the farm, but you are at that location. It can get you there a little bit quicker. Another option we have is this address search function. So I could say, um, let's see, uh, four seven seven stores road. We'll just say, and then this will drop down some other options here. and allow you to zoom to an address. So that can be useful too if you're just starting out and you need to get to an address quickly. But I'm going to now jump back to, jump back to where I was drawing that other feature before. And I'm just gonna reload this page to, to get back there quickly. So I'm gonna go back up here again and say field C and the area type is field. And now I'm going to draw it for real. So I'm going to zoom in and say, this is field C. Okay, I'm going to come down and save that. And there we have it. This is our, our farm map. If I click on field C, it'll tell me what the calculated area of that field is. And if I have any records associated with it, it'll also show me a summary of that here. So I think we can see that with field B. There's that one input I created in the, in the previous section. So that's how you draw areas in PharmOS. Once you've got your list, you may want to organize it a little bit better too. So you can actually arrange these things hierarchically by clicking change next to the hierarchy. And then I could say, okay, well, here's my property, 30 Black Snake Lane. I'm going to just put all of these areas under that property. That way, if I add another property in the future, I can organize those under that one. 
You can also use this to say that you have fields within a field or beds within a field. So the hierarchy just gives you another way of organizing things. So the other feature I want to show with mapping is this bed generator feature. So this is useful if you've got a farm that is divided up into beds. Uh, beds being um, a series of parallel uh, areas that you're planting into. So the way this works is you'll, you'll go to areas and then you'll click bed generator. And then the first step is to select the parent area. So you want to make sure you've got a field defined around where your beds will be. So in this case, that's field B. And when I click on that, it'll automatically populate this field on the left here. Then what we do is we say how many beds are in that field or how many areas we want to generate. So for this one, I'll just say 60. And then lastly, we enter an orientation. So the orientation is just an angle between 0 and 360 that tells you what, what direction the beds are heading in, whether that be north, south, east, west, or somewhere in between. So for this one, I'll leave that set to 0, and we'll see what that looks like. So there's two buttons at the bottom here, preview and generate. Always preview first, because this will show you on the map to the right what it looks like before you create those beds. You can always delete the beds after you create them, uh, but it's a lot easier to get it, try to get it right the first time. So that looks pretty good actually with an orientation of zero, but just to demonstrate how this orientation works, I'll change it to 15, click preview again. And you can see they go off on an angle there. If I change it to 90, then they'll be going north, south. Uh, 180 will be uh, pretty much the same as zero. Um, the reason you might want to do 180, though, is the numbering of the beds will be determined by the, um, by the direction here. So if I, if I leave this set to zero, it'll number them from top to bottom. So it'll be bed 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 from the top to bottom. If your beds are already numbered and you want to go from the bottom to top, set this to 180. And that's actually described here, I think, in this... Um, uh, in this help text under here. So if you forget, just read that. So I'll set that back to zero. Um, down here, there's an option to say what type of area you want to create. So it should, it should default to bed, but if not, uh, you can come in here and select what you want, uh, or I mean, if you want to create parallel areas of another kind, uh, like, uh, a field or if you have a number of greenhouses that are all in parallel and next to one another that might be useful. This tool is really just for for drawing a bunch of parallel areas automatically for you. So I'll leave that and then I'll click generate. And what it's doing is going through and creating a new area for each one and then we end up with this message 60 areas were generated. So now I can go back to my areas list, and if we zoom in on that field, there are our beds. And what's nice now is that each one is a separate area, and it shows you what the calculated square footage is for each. So that's bed 9, here's bed 20, bed 31, bed 46. And that means that each one of these is a separate record in FarmOS. So you can click onto that, and this is field B, bed 46, you can see it highlighted in orange right there, which means that you can then have records that are specific to that area. So here I could come up here and say, add, a, add an observation. And I could say that um, there was uh, caterpillar damage on this bed. If I save that, now that will be saved under this bed under observations down below. So again, FarmOS just gives you some tools to be able to enter all kinds of records and link them together so that you can find them again in the future. That's the goal. So I think that covers the general mapping of FarmOS. Um, there are other areas within FarmOS that you might also be interested in using beyond the nutrient management module itself. You can enter in your equipment. Uh, if you manage animals, you could enter in animal records. Um, you could also enter all of your plantings and seedings and transplantings and harvests. 
Um, that's kind of a whole nother section, though, so we're not going to cover that in this video, but uh, there's a great amount of information on farmos.org in the user guide. Under managing assets, you can find information about managing your plantings, animals, equipment, compost. FarmOS also has a, uh, a feature for streaming environmental sensor data into your, into your system. I can actually show that real quick because I think it looks cool. And this is all just to demonstrate that it's a, it's a very flexible system and we're really trying to develop a community of, of users and developers to, to work on it together moving forward because it's open source. All right, I, awesome. think that, I think that covers everything. Awesome, super cool. Thank you, Mike.